Welcome to the Lindenwood Bell Radio Podcast, where we explore topics in literacy and learning. I'm Dave Hungerford for Lindenwood Bell, and today I'm talking with Patrick Laird, a running back for the University of California Golden Bears football team. Welcome to Lindenwood Bell Radio. Thank you for having me. Glad. Pat, you went to a, uh, to give people kind of a background on you, you went to a small school in San Luis Obispo, California, had several phenomenal football seasons, and decided to go to Cal and walked on without a scholarship. Right. What, what made you choose Cal? Um, I think the first thing I was considering was just the academics. Um, I had some options to go to some good academic schools back east. Uh, my brother played football at Cornell. And then uh, I kind of I had a good, good senior year, and my coaches thought maybe I could play at a, a higher level, so they sent my film out to some, uh, some colleges. But I said just restrict it to some, you know, good academic schools. And um, when, I got the, when I got the walk-on spot at Cal, I, I, you know, I Googled you know, where their business program lined up, and it's, uh, it's one of the best in the country. And so that, that was pretty much my decision. But then also I, I thought you know, it, it would be fun and it would be a great challenge to you know, try to play at a, a, a higher level and play in the power, one of the Power Five conferences. So that was kind of the idea behind my decision. Hmm. And, and what was the, the ramp up academically from high school to uh, a big school that has such a great academic re- reputation uh-huh. such as Cal? Yeah. Um, you know, I went, to, I went to Mission Prep in, in San Luis Obispo. And it's actually, I mean, Mission, I thought, prepared me pretty well um, compared to some of my peers uh, there, but there is, there is a big learning curve and, you know, in Berkeley is kind of well known for kind of throwing all the students into the fire and for the ones that are able to handle it, you know, they learn a lot. And so, uh, there, there was a challenge, but I think I had a good base just with my, uh, my high school education. And then both of my parents are, um, well-educated and they, so they kind of, you know, laid a, laid a good foundation for myself. Great. And, and in terms of football last year, which was your third year playing, Mm -hmm. uh, you had really a breakout season. You had nine touchdowns, over 300 receiving yards, over 1,100 rushing yards. Mm -hmm. Uh, You were awarded a scholarship. What what changed for you football-wise? I just think it was kind of the culmination of a couple years of hard work, and then it was just the opportunity. Um, We had a new coaching staff come in last spring, so this is a We've had them for just over a year now, so those, it was our first season with them. So that you know, we had some fresh eyes come in, and uh, they they kind of they saw that I, I was a, a good football player, capable of playing, and then um, I kind of made my way into the rotation, and then uh, just kind of got the opportunity last year. Um, but yeah, no, it wasn't much that changed in my work ethic. It was just kind of the opportunity, and I always thought I could do something on the field, and so when I got the chance, I just um, I made it worth it. Well, you got to score a lot of touchdowns. I, I saw yeah. that you had had one previous to last year, and then last year you had nine touchdowns. Mm-hmm. People may be wondering why we're talking to a football player on a, a literacy podcast. Uh, one of the touchdowns I saw early in the season, you had a, a unique touchdown celebration. Maybe mm-hmm. you can describe that for us. Yeah, so it's just uh, a couple times last season when I went into the end zone, I'd throw the ball to the ref. And then uh, I would put my hands together and open them up, just like I was reading a book. And uh, a couple times I took it off the shelf, or you know, I pretended to turn some pages, or I'd hand out some books to my old linemen. Um, yeah, that was that. That was the the touchdown celebration. There it is. That's the segue between the football player and the <laughs> and the literacy piece. What, yeah. what inspired you to do that? So it was actually um, two seasons ago. So I was just playing mostly special teams, kind of contributing. Uh, that way and one of my one of my roommates is he was kind of the go-to receiver he scored a bunch of touchdowns and he was doing all these cool celebrations and so we'd always give him input and tell him what he should do next and then we started just going around the room doing hypotheticals saying oh who would do what and someone jokingly said you know pat would probably read a book and i kind of kept that in the back of my mind i'm not ashamed of my love of reading and uh and my love of that education. So I kind of kept that in the back of my mind. I said, you know, if I ever get the opportunity and uh, get out there on the field and score, I, that's what, that's going to be uh, something I do. And so I did it the first game and then did it the second game. And, um, people just loved it. The Cal fans loved it. So I kept it going and kind of opened up a, a dialogue of my interest in reading and something that I'm passionate about. Well, tell me about that interest in reading. Where did that come uh, from? 
it just, I think it just started at a young age. I, I always looked up to my older siblings and um, all three of them, you know, they, they found the time to read, especially my oldest sister, Michaela. Uh, she's a lawyer now, but I always just saw her reading all the time. She's probably, you know, one of the fastest readers I know, but uh, yeah, she would just devour books. And I, I remember just being young and I couldn't wait till I could read chapter books. And um, it kind of, it kept going. And then I kind of started to find my own interest in high school and, um, you know, handle my business in the classroom, but there was things that I wanted to learn outside. And so I thought, you know, reading, reading different books and articles was something that I enjoyed doing. And then, uh, just kind of continued it into, into college and, um, college students always talk about how busy we are and it's true, but I think there's always, there's always time that you can find to, to read something that you're interested in. So you can read some books for pleasure, not just for uh, schoolwork at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I always, always try to find the time to do that. I just, I think it's important. And, um, yeah, there's like, you know, people always talk about how busy they are, but you know, if you just put your phone down for 15 to 30 minutes a day, you can you can find some time to read some some interesting stuff. Do you find yourself reading actual books or do you read electronically more? Uh, I read actual books. So I'm actually I'm sitting in my room right now, I'm building my own uh, my own library. That's kind of the goal, but no, I just have a I have a small bookshelf right now that I filled up. And, um, yeah, I, I kind of like the collection aspect of it, but then I also just, I love, I love just reading the books and having the, the actual paper there. Jeez, Pat, you, you sound like a throwback. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. What's on your shelf right now? What are you reading? Uh, I have a, I got a new Abraham Lincoln biography, so I've been kind of making my way through that, which actually is related to one of the classes I'm taking, um, on, it's a kind of studying politicians, um, and so I'm, I'm doing an essay on Abraham Lincoln. So there's some over overlap there. Um, and then I have a bunch of social science books, you know, I got like Charles Duhigg, the power of habit, Daniel Kahneman's thinking fast and slow. Uh, I have all the Freakonomics books and then, um, you know, I got some good fiction books. I got all the whole Harry Potter series on my bookshelf right now. I got the game of Thrones series. And so I like to mix it up a bit. Good. Well, you've got something going on this summer that's, mm -hmm. uh, very exciting and new. And, and tell me yeah. about that. So I'm hosting my own uh, reading challenge. It's uh, it's open to all students currently enrolled in the first through sixth grade. And uh, the idea is to you know some kids they get out of they get out of school and they don't pick up a book you know all summer and busy playing sports which is awesome getting outside. But uh, it's really important for kids in elementary school to to read some over the over the summer months just so they don't lose their reading skills. And so the idea was to, you know, fight that summer learning loss, or some people call it summer learning slide. And um, I got some, I got the backing of uh, the Cal Athletic Department, and we're going to award four free tickets to every student that completes the challenge. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, that slump is a real, I mean, that's well-researched and a, and a right. real thing. Yeah. And, and especially uh, important for, a, a demographically, there's a, the higher the poverty rate, the, the higher the slump. Right, exactly, and, and some uh, some studies have kind of pinpointed that summer learning slide uh, is one of the main factors in the uh, disparity between low income and high income kids. By the time they get to high schools, uh, they kind of all pin it all the way back to elementary school when um, you know kids just during the summer months not getting enough reading hours in. Well, you alluded to something earlier too, talking about if people get off their phone for half an hour and read. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a feeling that no matter what the, the demographic, that the uh, electronic device addictions that are so prevalent might be cutting into that as well for everybody. Right. Yeah. And, it, and the, the thing with this challenge is um, a lot of it is just kids, you know, they, they hear their, their parents are telling them to do things all the time. And so part of this is getting me out there and, and some of my teammates are going to help as well and just you know, encouraging kids and they're going to hear it from someone that's not their teacher or someone that's not their parent and, uh, someone a little younger and trying to encourage them to, to tell them, you know, the importance of reading and, uh, maybe get off their phone, get off their video games for just, you know, it, all it takes is 20 minutes a day probably. And they could knock out a couple books this summer and then, uh, finish the challenge. And, um, hopefully if they're able to, them and their parents can come to the game September 1st. And who are you playing September 1st? Uh, the University of North Carolina. So we went out there and played them the first game of the season last year. So they're going to come out this year. Um, yeah, come to come to Berkeley and uh, hopefully we'll get a, get another win against them. Well, it sounds like you have the opportunity to be quite a, a role model for some of these kids in uh, kind of an unusual way. What who who do you look to as a role model? 
uh, a, a bunch of people, um, both my parents, they work really hard. Um, and then, you know, like I said earlier, my, uh, my older siblings, um, you know, my older sister's lawyer, a lawyer, and, um, she's doing really well right now. My other older sister is, uh, is a nurse and she, she works really hard and she's really smart. And then, uh, my older brother, he's finishing school up at Cornell. And so they're, they've just kind of laid the, the foundation for, you know, the importance of education in my family. And so I kind of just, uh, wanted to follow in their footsteps. And then it's just a, it's a joy of, of reading and a joy of learning. I've, I've just found and have been lucky to have since I was younger. And, um, I always try to impart that on anyone that's, uh, willing to listen. I kind of hear a theme also of just hard work too. Do you get some sort of satisfaction out of just kind of grinding? Yeah, I love, uh, I love the process of, of improvement. So, um, I, you know, I, people like to write down goals and put them up on the wall. I'm not, I'm not too into goals, but I, you know, if you, if you have a goal, I always say you, you can write it down, but at least have like 10 bullet points underneath that on how you're going to achieve that goal. And so I'm, I'm a more of just focused on the process, uh, daily, weekly, monthly improvement. And then, uh, you know, eventually you're going to, you're going to hit that goal. But, uh, yes, it's uh, hard work is fun. I think when you do it, when you do it the right way. Well, and football has to be almost like a full-time job for you at the university <laughs> level, certainly that high of a uh, D1 level. Yeah, no, people say that a lot. I don't know if it's, uh, I don't think it hits 40 hours a week, but it, you know, during the season, sometimes it gets up there, but no, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. Cause you're, you're pretty much with your best friends, you know, a couple hours a day and, uh, then you have the opportunity to meet a, meet a bunch of great people. So, uh, it's, it's, it's hard work, but there, there's students at our school that are actually, you know, they're working just as much as us outside of, out of football. It might not be as, as physically taxing, but, uh, yeah, it's, I think every, every college student kind of balances a big workload and I'm fortunate that I get a, I get to balance a big workload, but it's something that I, I really enjoy doing. What's been the response to the, the challenge so far? It's, it's been awesome. Um, right now we have over 300 signups. Uh, I just announced two weeks ago. And so I think that's, that's a pretty good number after two weeks and we're going to kind of promote signups all the way into June. Um, and then, uh, it's been great cause I've been invited to a, a bunch of elementary schools around the area. Um, even some ones down in the central Valley and, and SoCal, and I don't know if I'll be able to make it down there. I would love to, but, uh, yeah, it's been great because I've connected with so many teachers, so many parents, even kids have been emailing me saying, Hey, we want you to come visit our school and meet me and my friends. And so it's, it's just fun, uh, getting those, you know, invitations from people. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I already have 10, uh, 10 visits set up. I'm looking to schedule some more in late May, early June, uh, and basically until kids get out, get out into the summer, um, summer vacation period, I would love to continue to promote signups, but yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great response so far. Now, I think before the challenge started, I, I saw something online where a, a student, you went to a school and he, he had your Jersey. Do you recall that, uh, that incident? Yeah. So that was actually, that was last, last semester during, during the season. Um, this kid, he had had my, he had his, a jersey, uh, a 28 jersey made um, early on in the season after he saw me play. I guess I, I kind of became his favorite player. And uh, then he had been telling people at school that he was going to dress up as me for Halloween. And the teachers kind of got a hold of it. And they, uh, they got a hold of me and let me know that he was doing that and asked me if I wanted to come surprise him. So uh, I had to do that. I had, took the opportunity to go surprise someone that dresses up for you as how uh, on Halloween. I thought it was a great opportunity. And then uh, I brought him actually a couple books. Uh, I remember back in first and second grade, my favorite books were like the magic tree house series. So I brought him some of those and he signed up for my reading challenge as well. His name's Patrick too. And um, so yeah, that was a great, great experience for me and uh, glad I got to go and meet all the kids in his classroom. And um, that, was, that was just a fun experience. It must be really interesting to be all of a sudden, have that that kind of fame spread a little bit yeah no i don't know i don't know how famous i am right now not not too not too famous but i know it's it's fun just with the the cal community all the football fans um it's great to just you know go and meet some of these people and that really care about the sport and really care about cal and the institution and some of the stuff that it stands for yeah there's some diehard fans in the in the bay area and elsewhere that's for sure yeah it's great do you have any uh, nfl aspirations yeah, definitely. That's kind of, that's my main focus right now. Um, just figuring, you know, if I can put together another solid season like I did last year, I think I'll, I'll have the opportunity and um, it's all about staying healthy. But 
I, I really think that our, our team is, is going to take a, a step uh, this next season in the right direction. I think, uh, you know, we went five and seven last year. We had a couple close games and, um, you know, we have a lot of people returning. So I'm, I'm really excited about uh, what our team's going to do next year. And um, if the opportunity presents itself at the end of the season, I'm um, definitely going to pursue, you know, playing football as long as I can. Well, you've had several players on your team in the past that are in the NFL. Jared Goff right. probably being the most recognized. Do you keep yeah. in touch with him at all? Or any of the yeah. NFL yeah, players? Keep, yeah, keep in, keep in touch with Jared a little bit. Um, whenever they're back in town, all the, all the NFL guys love to come by the stadium. So, yeah, it's uh, – it's been great and um, just keeping in contact with those guys and, and kind of picking their brain. And, uh, you know, every time I get the chance, I ask them questions, you know, like how was the preparation for the, you know, the draft and, you know, what did you do and who do you, who do you, where do you go train and who do you, who are you talking to? So things like that are always fun. But uh, yeah, the, the, whenever you're on a team with someone, you spend so much time with them. And so whenever you see the guys that go off and play somewhere on the other side of the country, uh, the minute they come back, it's like your teammates again, and you can just uh, hang out and ask them anything, and not, not even talk about football. So it's it's been kind of fun. I never never thought when I was younger I'd have you know friends in the NFL, but it's kind of funny to to say that now. I had the chance to meet uh, the coach Buddy Ryan years ago, and we were talking about uh, to bring it kind of back to learning mm-hmm. that they had their playbooks were you know, four inches thick. And there was so much to learn when you get to the NFL level that that reading and comprehension, uh, he said that there certainly is a, that's an important skill that players need to have to be successful in the league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard the same thing. And I think that's, uh, just from talking to my coaches, that's something that they believe is, uh, one of my strong suits. And so I'm going to continue to, to work on that and use that to, to, you know, separate myself if I can use the mental part of my game, um, you know, to get an edge on the opponent, I would love to do that. And then, it, yeah, I think just taking the time to sit down and, and learn a playbook is half the battle. Uh, so that's a, another skill that I think I, I've uh, been developing and, and continue to work on is, uh, you know, just sitting down and learning as much as you can about the offense. It makes it so when you're out there, you're not thinking, you're just, you're just playing. When it sounds like for this next season, you'll have hundreds of new fans that uh, yeah. will be. How big is the stadium? If this challenge gets really big, are you gonna have enough tickets to? Uh, I I think so. I mean, they, yeah, I think we hold like some a little over sixty thousand. So uh, I I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, right now we have three hundred signed up. If everyone comes, that's just you know just over twelve twelve hundred tickets. So uh, that'll be a good problem to have. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good problem to have, and um, I don't know if we had any sellouts last year. So maybe uh, we can get this reading challenge going and. Uh, hopefully get get the stadium full well where can people find out more about the reading challenge so you can uh you can go on my website walk on then run.com uh, and that's going to have you know some information about myself but uh mo- most importantly it's going to have a, a link to the the reading challenge and where you can sign up and um yeah you can uh, just if you put that in the url walk on then run.com you'll you'll be able to find everything and be able to sign up or uh, share it with anyone that you think would be interested in the challenge. Great. Walk on, then run. Well, that's fantastic, yeah. Pat. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. Yeah, well, I appreciate you guys having me and um, look forward to continue to promote the challenge and uh, yeah, can, and continue to uh, kind of spread the, the joy of learning to everyone out there. That's great. And have a great season. Thank you. Well, and thank you for listening to the Linwood Bell Radio Podcast. Find more episodes and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and follow Linwood Bell on Twitter at Linda Mood Bell, or on Facebook and YouTube. We are Linda Mood Bell Learning Processes.